Next up, and I want to include this because I think this is where McCullough was going, because there is going to be massive uncertainty. There's going to be a lot of problems coming up, especially with the presidential election, things that are going on with COVID-19, the quantitative easing, the problems with the traditional market. And I understand exactly where this gentleman, E.B. Tucker, is actually coming from, and it makes a total sense. This is from Stansbury Research. If you have not checked out this channel, it is fantastic. They do a lot of great interviews with traditional market players, people in cryptocurrency. They're going to have Raul Powell on pretty soon. So it's a pretty good diversification of people who are on, because here we've got E.B. Tucker, who is a uh, definitely a gold bug. He wrote, or the author of the book, Why Gold? why now he called a $1,900 gold not too long ago and he was totally spot on and what he's saying right now is that gold is going to go to $2,500 not in like a year or five years by December 31st and he's pretty much putting it all on the line said this is exactly what's going to happen so just for reference E.B. Tucker is this guy. He's a lead analyst uh, at Stansbury Investment Advisory and the Bill Bonner Letter, founding partner of uh, KSIR Capital Management, uh, which is an asset management firm, and co-founder KSIR Capital Corporate Finance Advisory, which is focused on the precious metals industry. So to say that this guy knows about gold, yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. So this, this first part right here is going to lay it all out about what's going to happen in the next three months. So let's take a listen. Uh, but look, I mean, anybody that read my book sees that this is this is coming in dominoes. So you're going to have numerous dominoes have to fall. And we're only about three innings into the baseball game. I mean, there's six innings left to go. You got to know what's coming next. There's a lot that's coming next. The election is so bullish for gold. It doesn't matter what happens. A Trump uh, victory for second term is, is bullish for gold in different ways. And a Biden victory is bullish for gold in other ways. You've got the U.S. Treasury just can't borrow enough money. I mean, they've never seen a dollar they didn't want to borrow. And, you know, we can get into all that. But 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 everything is set up. And I know the call is shocking from here, but uh, well, let's see what happens. Hold on. So that's my question about McCullough on that last article. If he took all his money out of Bitcoin, where did he put it into? Because hopefully it's not just cash because cash is on fire. Unless he sees a big dip, he got out. And he's going to let it all just kind of ride down and then buy back in at a certain point. Now, E.B. Tucker is saying the exact opposite. He's like, look, gold's going to go up to 2500 And I will tell you right now, if gold is a store of value goes to 2500 you can, I can almost guarantee Bitcoin will go the exact same way. And here's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of charting that goes into this. There's a lot of setup in the market. The entire gold market, every ounce of gold ever mined in human history is only worth $12 trillion. And so this year, you, you've seen, you know, three to four trillion dollars in stimulus go out the door. There's last night there was a call from the, the House for 2.2 trillion more. I mean, you're almost had a deficit in the U.S. of half the value of all the gold on the whole planet. So so look, and a lot of things have happened. I mean, Buffett coming into gold. You know, I wrote in my book about Buffett's negative statements about gold. But why is he coming into gold? Because there's no return on cash. There's no return on bonds. The stock market is not appealing to anyone that's sensible. And you look at gold and you've just crossed off all the reasons you used to hate gold. I think other people are going to come to this conclusion. But let's make sure we focus on something. Gold is not an investment. It's an asset. Exactly. Gold is an investment. It's an asset. Just like Bitcoin, which is the highest performing asset class of the last decade. So just saying. But yeah, I mean, I I, get, I agree with E.B. Tucker. Look, if my... My thoughts are this. I've always thought this, that the new savings account should be gold, silver, Bitcoin. It should just be gold, silver, Bitcoin. Just it totally makes sense where one has a stability in the traditional sense as gold because it's been around for millennia. And also you have Bitcoin, which is, which is what I consider to be digital gold and can be an excellent store of value. Just put them both together. So here is where me and E.B. Tucker bifurcate or we separate here in our philosophy and what we think about where he's going to talk about cryptocurrency especially Bitcoin. So let's just take a listen. Um, but I've recently just had Michael Saylor on the show uh, um, and he moved his company's cash into crypto. I actually have Raul Powell coming on. He's also moving it, you know, a huge position, 50% of his assets in Bitcoin. And when I asked them, well, why not gold? Their argument is, well, you could keep mining gold. You could pay enough money for someone to find that gold, but you can't do that with Bitcoin. Maybe, I mean, but you can have Pierre Lassan on your show. I'm sure he'll come on if you ask him and he'll tell you that they haven't found a 50 million ounce deposit well, in a shockingly long time. that's my answer to them. Yeah. But, you know, I guess yeah. they're, well, I guess well, for... 
let's let's get into that for a minute because I talk about I talk about crypto in my book and I think I do it in a very fair way because there's a there's a place where crypto is headed and and it's a place people haven't considered and I, I wrote this in newsletters for a long time I don't think people really fully caught on so I devoted a big chunk of the book to it because I don't think it ends well for crypto and I think people need to really consider what I'm proposing there but let's look at gold gold you can melt it down you you can't trace it you can turn it into uh, belt buckles teeth jewelry back into coins, back into bars, and you never know where it comes from. Crypto has ultimately got to go on to a network to be traded. Sure, you can store it cold in a safe on a thumb drive. Sure, you could trade it with someone off market. But as we saw with the kids that that blackmailed uh, Twitter accounts mm-hmm. last year, uh, earlier okay. this year, that got crypto, they tracked that crypto down and found those. Okay, so my point is, do you want something that's out of the system? If you want something that's out of the system, Pure, unadulterated gold is the only asset in the world that has no counterparty. Bitcoin still relies on that network to be traded. So a lot to unpack there. And you know what? E.B. Tucker's a pretty smart guy. He's been around the block, seems to know what he's talking about. It's just that there's just some little discrepancies. First, that is the biggest thing about gold bugs. They always say that, uh, oh, well, we haven't found this uh, any, any new mines out there with, with huge stashes of gold. Yes, I get that. But guess what? The mines that we do have, you cannot tell me. Nobody can tell me, absolutely nobody can tell me how much gold you can find in each one of those mines. And it seems like we're always finding more. So yes, these huge, enormous stashes may not be found, but you will still keep mining gold. And I don't know when that's actually going to stop. So with Bitcoin, we know, hey, there is a hard cap at 21 million and that is it. And guess what? We're never going to have 21 million because probably four to five million has already been lost over all the years. So that is just one thing we can debate. And Michael Saylor even talked about this. The uh, CEO of MicroStrategy said, look, I'm not saying that you know, we're going to find a ton of gold. He goes, but I will debate you that we cannot find more gold. And just by putting more money into it, humans or people will actually start to accelerate the process. And he talked about fracking and how there was a, you know, an oil shortage, a gas shortage. And all of a sudden with fracking, hey, didn't it worked out pretty well. And we don't have that charge anymore. So again, I don't know how much is going to be found, but we will find more and we will mine more. So that's the first part. The second part is, and this is my favorite, you know, gold bugs always say, well, we can melt it down we can make uh you know gold watches and rings and, and buckles and stuff like that who's doing that how many people who have who have gold are melting it down going hey you know what do this for me or i want to sell it for whatever else that's not happening as much people are storing gold as just a store of value and that is what it is for now i don't know how much is actually being used for you know gold and and or for uh, different products for watches and whatever else but that is not the majority of reasons why people buy gold i have gold and i didn't buy it so i can make a watch or sell it to some watchmaker i sold it because or i have it because it is a great store of value and it's been around for thousands of years so again i agree with eb tucker on that on that point now he talks about being out of the system and you can use the gold for other system. I don't know how many people are, are carrying around gold coins. I'm sure there are. I'm sure they're out there. But when's the last time you used your gold coin to buy a Lamborghini or whatever you bought it with? I, I just don't see that that whole thing. Maybe in like an apocalypse. Sure, I can see that. But if the apocalypse comes, uh, usually it's just the bigger guy uh, with the more guns who are going to take all your stuff. <laughs> That's just how I see it. And then lastly, you have to understand about Bitcoin. I mean, it is decentralized. It is open source. We can transfer it to anywhere in the world within minutes for next to nothing. It is the best performing asset class over the last decade. It used to cost a nickel, and now it costs almost $10,000. And it's why I'm heavily invested into it. So if, if gold can match that, then I'm all about it. But I still see Bitcoin has the edge over gold, although I have both. My final thoughts are just that the world's on fire. There's a lot of uncertainty. People are making some pretty stupid moves. And we just have to remember that uh, with uncertainty comes opportunity. And I think in this situation, Bitcoin, gold, and silver are a fantastic play. Just my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Oh, before we move on to the last one about uh, Theta, I just want to make mention that uh, my man John McAfee just got arrested for tax evasion charges on top of uh, the NRA uh, CEO, uh, LaPierre. He's under investigation for potential tax fraud. So um, pay your taxes. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm going to say because they're getting these, these big people and they're bringing them down. And it's kind of funny that out of all the times, all the quantitative easing that we're doing, all the different money printing, now we got to pay that, some, that, that back all of a sudden, you get like a John McAfee, 
LaPierre, in that, you know, our, our BitMEX situation, which just happened, I see a lot more of these things coming down and a lot more heavy hands. And I think a lot of people are going to get put through the grinder because, hey, government needs money. If the government needs money, watch out. If you want to learn about how to pay not so much in crypto taxes, take a look at my link in the description. It talks about crypto IRAs. All right, let's move on to the theta story.